everyone and welcome to MedBuys TV, where pharmacists like myself give you the information you need to better manage your health and medications. Today's topic, we're going to learn how to test your blood sugar. Testing your blood sugar, or also known as blood glucose, can be super complicated. So I really, I really just want to give you a step-by-step -step guide on exactly how to do it, uh, what it entails, and what the supplies are that you're going to need. Let's go over some basics. When you see or hear the word glucose, just know that that means sugar. So blood glucose is equal to blood sugar, which is basically the amount of sugar or glucose inside of your bloodstream. So that's basically what we're going to be measuring here when we're testing our blood sugar or our blood glucose. Testing your blood glucose actually requires you to get a sample of your own blood, put it onto a test strip, which will then be tested by a blood glucose machine like one I have here. I'm going to go over all of this with you step by step to make sure you know exactly uh, how to do this properly. Let's talk about what you'll need. Uh, you're definitely going to need to get yourself a blood glucose machine or a blood glucose monitor, uh, which you can get at your local pharmacy or you can get online like on Amazon. I'll definitely have a link uh, to all the supplies. Uh, it's going to be in the comment section or in the info section on the YouTube channel. This bl blood glucose monitor is what you're going to be inserting your test strip to uh, that's going to show you the actual results of your blood sugar. Next, you'll need test strips. Test strips are what you're going to use to put your blood sample on, which will be inserted into the machine uh, to be able to test exactly what your blood sugar is going to be. Now, one note of extreme importance is that you have to make sure that your blood glucose machine is the same brand of your test strips. Uh, these are not interchangeable. It's like if you have an iPhone and you need to charge your phone, but your friend has an Android charger, that Android charger is not going to work to fit into your uh, and charge properly your iPhone. So same concept here. The brand of testing machine, uh, no matter which one you have, has to match the one to your test strip. They do have available some uni what's marketed as universal test strips. I don't recommend using those. You won't get the accurate results like if you would be using uh, the branded test strips with the branded uh, monitor. So if you want to get an accurate reading, you have to make sure that the two brands are matching or they're the same exact brands um, for you to be able to get an, an accurate reading. Next, you're going to need a lancing device or, or individual lancets. So uh, there's two types of lancing devices. Uh, one is reusable and one is uh, like a disposable one. So you have a reusable one that is, uh, it's just, it's like a device like this that you can reuse lancets in there. Make sure to, every time you need to prick your finger, use a new one. Don't reuse needles. Or you have uh, these, which are, these are the disposable ones. So these come individually. Um, it's its own little device within itself. So after you use it, you can only use it once. You have to throw it away. Whereas this one, you always can keep the machine with you or the lancing device with you. Um, but you'll need individual lancets to uh, replace them every time you uh, want to prick yourself. Next, you're going to want to have alcohol swabs because before you prick your finger, you want to make sure it's as clean as possible, also to prevent infections and things like that. And then you want to make sure you have cotton balls uh, to be able to apply pressure or wipe any sort of excess blood after you've tested. And then finally, you'll need band-aids uh, just to cover up your finger uh, at right at the site that you have pricked your finger. And the last thing you want to do is have a sharps container. Uh, the sharps container are important, especially if you're going to be testing frequently. Uh, you'll have a lot of needles uh, that you have to dispose of. Using a sharps container is the best way to do that. You can also get that at any local pharmacy or, um, or online, which again, I'll have links to everything uh, below. All right, now that we've gone over some basics, we've gone over what you're going to need, let's, uh, let's go to step one. Prepare all of your supplies. Before you test, you're going to want to make sure you have your Band-Aid outside of the wrapping um, because you don't want to be you know, trying to get your Band-Aid ready to go with a bloody finger and then there's just like blood everywhere and stuff like that. So it's not a lot of blood usually, but um, you, you still don't want to, you know, have to be fidgeting with paper and getting this open right when you actually need to put your Band-Aid on there. Make sure you have your lancing device uh, ready to go, uh, whether it's going to be the individual disposable ones. Uh, you want to have those outside of the box ready to go, which uh, most of these come with some form of twist off uh, to get it ready to go. So I'll twist mine off. And here there's, you can't really see the needle or anything like that that's in there, but there is a very, very, very tiny needle inside of this device that when you activate it, it is going to uh, just kind of shoot out and kind of just kind of pinch your finger just a little bit uh, so you can get that blood sample ready to go. So you take the cap off of that one. Now, if you're using a reusable lancing device, you want to make sure before you get started that you insert your lancet into there as well. There's many different types of lancets out there, so especially the reusable ones. If you're going to have a reusable one, make sure to look at the uh, manual that comes with it. It shows you exactly how to take it off, how to get it ready to go, um, but I'll, I'll kind of go over the basics of that here. So once you have it open, you insert the uh, lancet, which also is just basically a little needle with a, usually all of them have a little top. 
that you kind of got to pull off here. So this one, you got to be careful with, with these because unlike the disposable lancets, these don't have a needle exposed once you get it ready to go. But all of the needles for a reusable one is always exposed. So you have to be very careful not to accidentally pinch yourself. So as soon as you get that top off um, or that little cap off the lancet that there, make sure you uh, put that cap back on. And now it's a little safer where you don't have the uh, needle exposed. There's a couple differences I wanted to mention about reusable uh, versus the disposable lancing devices because there's a couple benefits that are important. The reusable lancing device actually has a way for you to control the depth of the strike of the needle. Um, and this is cool because depending on your hand type, you might want that needle to shoot out a little bit further or sometimes you want it to shoot out just a little bit less depending on what your hand type is like. For example, if you are a, you know, if you have really tough hands, like if you work construction and, you know, you've got some tough skin on there, you might need to increase your, your depth a little bit to be able to actually get a decent uh, prick so you can get some blood sample out. However, if you're the total opposite where um, if you, um, someone might have a little bit more uh, gentle hands or very thin skin, you might need to tone the uh, that depth way down to the other side uh, to make sure you're not getting too deep of a, of a prick there, which can cause a lot more pain. This usually isn't supposed to be that painful, um, and these are great if you need to kind of adjust it to get to a point where um, it's as minimally as painful as possible when you do prick your finger. Now, most hand types, the average hand type is great for uh, right, the setting for this to be just right in the middle. So I'm gonna set mine, this one has four, so I'm gonna set mine to two. Um, instead of three. Now I'll, I'll just do, now I'll do two. I'll do two. Okay. So that's going to be in contrast to the disposable lancets because this is a fixed depth. You can't adjust, you can't adjust the depth on this one. Whatever, whatever this is going to prick, that's the depth you got to deal with. So uh, if you've got those tough hands, it might not be enough for you or it might be a little bit too much if you have uh, less tougher hands. So, um, and these are usually more expensive. The disposable ones are per lancet. Whereas, uh, the individual ones, uh, for the reusable device, is a lot cheaper. So it's also important to note that um, these reusable ones, you have to change out the device, the lancet in there. Uh, you do not want to reuse the same needle to prick your finger multiple times. Uh, you wanna be as sanitary as possible with that and make sure you're changing out your needle for every time you wanna test your blood sugar. And with these, um, mine was like a little, mine's like a little knob here that you can turn. Sometimes you turn the top to control the depth. So that also is just gonna depend on the device that you have and you'll just want to make sure that you read through your manual to see exactly how to change the settings on yours. Another cool thing about the reusable devices is you can kind of practice with exactly what this is gonna sound like or what happens when you when you activate and press the button. So this particular device, you actually need to kind of cock this little thing back here and it basically loads up the spring uh, to get ready to prick your finger. So um, you'll just kind of hear exactly what that'll kind of sound like here. So you heard that little click, that's after I press the button. Now, um, that Lance said, if I would have pricked my finger, I would need to change it. Since it's a, uh, since I did not do that, and it's technically a reusable device, I can just cock it back again to get it ready to go. Whereas if you launch one of these bad boys uh, by accident, that you have to throw this one away, um, it's no longer good to, uh, it's no longer good to use, so. Okay, so now that you got your Band-Aid ready to go, we talked about the alcohol swab, you wanna make sure that you have that ready to go as well. Did my alcohol swab here. You want to make sure you got your machine and your test shirts ready to go. So, just get this thing open. All right, so as you can see, these uh, machines come with a lot of stuff in there. The one I got came with a, uh, looks like a little travel case here. Um, it also came with all the manuals. I'll get this open. Yeah, mine came with a cool travel case, uh, the manual. Um, some of them also come with its own uh, lancing device. So now I have two lancing devices. Uh, so there's an important tip to make sure you read the box to see you might have a lancing device, whereas I bought a separate one. So uh, this, one's, this one's a good example of the how to change the depth on this one, because this one you can kind of turn it and uh, the, it says like one, two, three, this one's up to five, and you could turn depending on how deep you want that prick to go. So that's pretty cool. I like this one better. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this one instead. I don't like this one. So let's practice on. See, I gotta open mine, get it all ready to go. Take it off there. Put my lancet in here. Get that ready to go. Peel the cap off. Put the top back on. I'm gonna put it on three for this one because I consider myself to have average hands. So 
I'm gonna put that one on three. Oh, where's the machine? All right, uh, so here's the machine. Uh, here's what it looks like here. Looks like one of the uh, old school iPods uh, that we used to know and love. And then we have our test strips here. Now, some machines come with, uh, some machines have to be programmed. Um, some machines come with like a little chip uh, that you have to insert that matches the test strip, uh, which this one is one of those. So I'm gonna do that here now. And you basically just have to put in the little chip here. So that chip basically makes it know that I'm gonna be using these specific uh, testing strips. And that's important also because if you have a machine that has the wrong chip in it and it doesn't match the, match the test strips, you might have not the best readings or not the most accurate readings. Uh, this is why I'm going through this video because as you can see, these things can get really complicated. Uh, so hopefully this is really gonna clear some stuff up for you guys. This little container here is where the test strips are located. So um, I just opened that to pull out a test strip and this is what the test strips look like. So. So to get your machine turned on, all you gotta do is insert the test strip and that usually does the trick. Now uh, the test strips actually have like what looks also like a computer chip at the top and at the bottom. Sometimes they kind of go like have a point at the, at the bottom of them. Uh, sometimes they're just, it's like a full rectangle. Um, however, they're all, there will always be a, what looks like kind of like a chip on, a, on the part that is gonna be inserted into the machine. So I'm gonna insert that here and my machine turned on. It beeped and now, now there's codes and stuff. Okay, my machine right now is basically ready to go. So uh, what's fairly universal about machines, some of them do have on off buttons, but what's fairly universal is the moment that you insert properly a test strip into that machine, it's gonna turn on and be ready to take uh, a blood sample for uh, blood sugar testing. Uh, one thing though is, and I'm not sure depending on how long my other explanations go is, sometimes if you put the test strip in and you do a bunch of other stuff and you kind of get distracted, and the test strip is in there for too long, the machine might turn off by itself. So you have to make sure that you don't want to insert the strip too soon before you actually get to testing. Um, that way the machine doesn't turn off by accident. So hopefully that will not happen to me though. Uh, now's a good time I guess to talk about where exactly are you going to uh, use the Lancet to prick your finger. So uh, usually it's done at the tip of the fingers and usually you know, starting out you start with your dominant hand is where you'll hold uh, your device in and then the uh, non-dominant hand is where you'll be the finger that you will prick. Now there's actually a specific technique in terms of where or location as to where you want to prick your finger uh, to have the least amount of pain. Uh, so there's in certain areas of your finger there's more nerve endings than others. If you test at the top of your finger here it's actually a little bit more painful than um, where the ideal spot is and also if you go kind of directly from the side uh, you're going to be uh, in uh, it's going to be a little bit more painful. Um, so try to avoid going straight down and try to avoid going like kind of perpendicular this way. Um, you actually, the best place to test or, or to uh, prick your finger is actually kind of like from a diagonal, like 45 degree angle coming in this way here. And that's gonna be the ideal spot for you to um, get a prick and minimize the, uh, uh, the pain of that prick. Most machines are only uh, using the blood sugar from your finger um, to get an accurate test. However, there are some other machines out there that do allow you to test at alternate sites. Um, sometimes it could be like the arm or um, like another place of your hand or, or like forearm, something like that. Um, however, I do not recommend these alternate site testings because uh, they can be unreliable in terms of exactly what your blood sugar is um, at a specific moment. Because sometimes if you test at an alternate site, like somewhere on your arm, let's say, uh, that might not be an, an accurate reflection of what your sugar is at the exact moment um, because of the time it takes your actual blood sugar levels to reach a particular area. However, your blood sugar in your fingertips is um, the most reliable in terms of your blood sugar at, a very, at that very moment, at that very instant. And because of that, I would only recommend um, testing at the uh, tip of your finger because you're going to get the most reliable uh, results of what your blood sugar is at that very moment. Oh look, see, my blood machine turned off. See, so that's what happens because I left the strip in too long, so uh, point proven there. One other important thing to note is that if you're going to be um, testing your blood sugar frequently, you want to make sure that you don't use the same spot to test your finger because if you test your finger in the same spot every time, you're actually going to build up some scar tissue in that particular area. So it's going to be recommended that when you, if you do have to test frequently, uh, to make sure you switch the sites or even sides of your finger to get that blood sample from, just to prevent the buildup of scar tissue. And even changing hands is also um, another way too to just, uh, again, prevent and building at that scar tissue maybe on a, on a particular hand. All right, so now that we know exactly which finger we're gonna use and exactly where we're going to prick our finger to get our first blood sample, 
Next step is to prepare your finger. Now, um, you'll just need to do that. You'll just need your alcohol uh, swab here uh, to be able to clean the finger off. So this is my alcohol swab here. So one important thing to note is that after you use that alcohol swab to clean your finger, you want to make sure you don't immediately prick and measure your blood sugar like immediately right after that. You want to let that alcohol dry up a little bit because if you do get uh, some alcohol on your blood sample, it might actually either pop up an error or not give an accurate reading. So make sure you let that alcohol dry uh, before you actually prick your finger. All right, so since my machine turned off, I'm going to take out my strip and then insert it again to turn on the machine again uh, because I'm pretty close to getting ready to test here. Now that I feel like my, uh, my alcohol is dried, uh, the way you prick your finger, you place the lancet right against your finger in that area at, at a diagonal um, angle, um, right where I told you to earlier, and you basically, and then you just press the button, and you're gonna feel a prick. Whereas with this one, uh, this particular lancet actually doesn't have a a, a button. Um, you actually have to press down with this one to activate it and some of them do have a button so again just make sure to read your manual for whatever lance you're using to see exactly how uh, you have to actuate that uh that needle to prick your finger all right and then we're ready to go so now that i got a blood sample going i'm going to grab my machine with the uh, tip of the test strip here and i'm going to let it touch the the strip soon after i touched the blood with the test strip um it took a couple seconds but i heard a beep that beep basically told me that the machine and the test strip had enough blood of a blood sample to uh, to get a good reading. So as you can tell, it's not a lot of blood uh, that came out. Mine actually, I actually don't need a Band-Aid. Um, I'm going to put one on, but I actually didn't really need a Band-Aid. The blood is gone there. I did use my, uh, my cotton ball uh, to kind of wipe it off, but it's basically good to go. Uh, it's not continually bleeding or anything, but I will still use my Band-Aid. All right. Couple seconds after you prick your finger and you get your uh, blood sample onto the machine, literally it took like I think three or four seconds for my results to pop up there. So um, it's pretty quick. Now, one important thing that you need to know is that uh, you have to make sure that that test strip is inside the machine when you're going to put that blood sample onto the test strip. You don't hold the test strip, put the blood sample on, and then put the test strip in the machine. That's not how that's not how the process works. You have to make sure that the test strip is inside the machine. Um, for you to be able to which is great because it provides like of a handle almost for you can so you can get like a good a good test uh, Sample in there, but just make sure that when you're testing that machine is that test strip is inside the machine um, To allow you to get uh, a proper reading So how do you even interpret the results of your blood sugar test? Well, um, that can also be pretty complicated So I'm gonna do a whole nother video on exactly what all those numbers mean uh, So just go to the YouTube channel and search Medvise TV and you'll be able to find uh, the video for that there just search diabetes numbers medvise and it should pop into uh into the search bar on youtube and that's basically uh, all the steps that you'll need to know on how to test your blood sugar i want to give you a quick note though about uh, treating hypoglycemia there might be a time where you test your blood sugar and i'm and it might be way too low um and there's actually a very simple way to treat uh low blood sugar which is called hypoglycemia and it's just sugar so orange juice apple juice or a candy bar um, would be a good thing to do if you if your blood sugar drops under 70 putting you in what's considered hypoglycemic uh, conditions make sure that you find a way to get some sugar into your system some pharmacies even sell glucose tablets or even uh, like glucose gels that you can uh, quickly just you know either take or let dissolve in your mouth or whatever uh, so you can get that quick burst of sugar into your system so if you have had um, issues with low blood sugar in the past Make sure to always carry glucose tablets with you. Um, and if you do find yourself in a situation where you do have low blood sugar, uh, just make sure to get some sugar um, into your system as quickly as possible. So that's all I have for today. As always, please do not start or change the way you use any medications without first talking to your pharmacist or your healthcare provider. If you have any questions about diabetes, about your blood sugar levels, um, or about how to test your blood sugar levels, please um, shoot me an email. You can email me at richard at medvise.com. I'd love to help. Um, if you even need help with managing your diabetes, uh, please also reach out to me. Thanks for watching. Take care.